What's up, guys? How's it going? I know it's been a while. I know, I know, I know. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's just tough making videos. It really is. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, it's probably like... It's just... It, it's so time-consuming because... I know now why Rudy closed his store. Because... The amount of time it takes for me to like make a video or do anything, it takes so much time away from the business. Whether it's like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20, whatever it is, it's too much time away from the business. Uh, because think about it like this. So today, tonight, uh, we have like commander night. And for me to do this right now, run, make a video, Right now I have about 30, 35 people downstairs. Um, I need, you know, to hire an employee to do that while I do this. Uh, I know people are like, ah, why don't you just do it in the morning? I, I literally can't. Be between, you know, dealing with the, the Patreon, between dealing with my own orders on TCG Player, eBay, this, Amazon... <laughs> <laughs> you just can't. There's not enough time in the day. There really isn't. Um, that's probably one of the reasons why you know Rudy closed his store. It's just, it, it's just, it's a shame. But it's almost like I could see the Patreon scaling to a point where technically, really, you don't need the store, which is why you know. He closed the store. Um, it, it's just a nonstop battle between time and trying to make content, making sure all the orders get out, get out every day on time, uh, which we've been doing. I, I did hire someone else, but also, you know, like, <laughs> there's only so much money you could pay out every month before it gets too much. You know what I mean? Right now, I'm still, you know, currently just paying myself the bare minimum to pay my bills and, you know, maybe have a little bit extra. But everything else gets reinvested into the business. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much why I think <laughs> Rudy closed his store. And, you know, he wasn't a WPN. I, I am. So we do events here also, which, you know. Need, you need payroll for that. You need someone to run it. I need someone to, uh, you know, hand out the packs. And to be completely honest with you, running events isn't the most lucrative thing in the business. You just, you're just move like for draft, you're just moving a booster box. That's literally it. You're just selling a booster box. That's it. I, it's unfortunate, but that's how it is. And if you, you know, charge a competitive rate you're not making money maybe you're making an extra ten dollars off of the thing and if you don't give good rewards oh <laughs> good uh good um play rewards oh my god so for dominary remastered i gave away a collector booster box a collector booster box not a pack a box and I got a four-star Google review because the prize structure wasn't good enough. They didn't get good enough, even for first place. Now, it was a pack per win, which is very standard in the industry. And a collector booster box on top of that. I'm sorry you didn't win the collector booster box, but... I, like, I don't know what else to do. Like... The person was like, oh, you should have uh, gave it away uh, uh, with performance. I don't like doing that. I don't like giving away prizes like that based on performance because it brings the ultra competitive, ultra sweaty people here. I, I don't like it. I like a very casual play experience for everyone. People play this game after work, blow off steam. I don't need my casual player base to be across from a player who's ultra competitive and this is their life. I understand that there's that type of person out there. You know, that, that those people exist. I get it. 
Um, I just, I much rather prefer a casual play experience in my store. So, which is why I do the prizing structure the way I do. It's to, to benefit the casual players. So, yeah, there's that. Um, what was I even saying? Jesus, I went off on a tangent. Oh, so yeah. Um, yeah, I could see why someone would, you know, close their store, at, like like Rudy, to um, further pursue the Patreon and online sales. Is because, to be completely honest with you, the online portion of the business is what carries the business. Um, sure. Uh, In-store sales are great because, you know, higher profit margin, which uh, all will be one is by far the best selling set in my store to date. In-store alone, we've sold over 90 set booster boxes, which is in the set's been out a week, which is insane. Normally, I'm left with like a death pile of like 50 cases that I have to just crack open feverishly to get some type of value out of. But now I'm left with like five or six cases and I'm like, damn, I might not have any left over for next month's patron sale, which is another thing like to sort of balance. Like I I need to have enough stock level for the store and enough stock level for the patrons. So it's almost like I'm running two stores at once. Uh, So I need to have, so I have this many patrons, X amount of patrons. I have to have that amount of stock left over after every month in order to run another sale. Sure, people aren't going to want it. They're going to want something else. They're not going to want that set anymore, whatever, whatever it is. But that's extra capital that I need to invest and have sitting in a product that nine times out of 10 after it comes out, loses half of its value. So you could see why, you know, getting rid of one of these things would help you out drastically. Um, But yeah, All Be One is by far the best selling set that I've had in store to date. It's insane. Uh, I even sold through majority of my pre-release kits which I'm like almost always left with like three or four cases just sitting and collecting dust which just gets like set into the shadow realm that's what I call this one little shelf I have in this store that's left over with all the pre-release kits that never like got bought or sold or whatever it just goes on that shelf in the store and that's the shadow realm (laughs) it has kits all the way back from when I opened, which was like, I think, Crimson Vow. So, yeah, it has the pre-release kits left over from that. Uh, Yeah, so that's a little something we have in the store. And if this next thing happens, I don't want to jinx it just yet, but we might be moving to a new location. And if we do... I'm going to film the whole process and walk you through literally everything because technically we'll be like closed for that week or two just to move everything, get everything up and running. It's probably double the square footage, which I'm at right now. And it has a drive through. So that would be crazy doing like in-store pickups through a drive through. I don't think any store has that, any trading card store. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, and it's really close to my location, so I wouldn't be, like, uprooting and, like, sort of, like, fracturing off my player base and, like, moving to a new location. It's, like, pretty close, like, really close. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I just wanted to make a video, say what's up, guys, I'm not dead, I'm alive, and, uh... I really hope this new thing happens because it'll be so cool to make like a little series of everything going through the whole process from start to finish. There hasn't been one like that since I think Rudy did his. Uh, Yeah, so it'll be cool. Guys, 
I love you so much. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.